What is a good plan is I know I've given this as a homework but I'm going to just do this now okay we'll just do this here in class we can assign something else for the homework yeah this is a basically a DC motor model yeah and what I need you what I, I had asked uh, of in the homework was to basically verify the two lemmas yeah? point one and point two so what I'm going to do is basically try to just Let's see if we can do this on our own and if we remember all the ingredients of this lemmas, right. So that's basically what I wanted you to verify. I think that's quite visible, yeah. So you see that uh, there is some nonlinearity here and here. Let's not worry about what the parameters are and so on, uh, what theta is, what a, b is and so on. That's not our concern right now. We just want to verify these lemmas, okay. And we are also given an output with which respect to which we want to work. Now uh, the first thing is what was lemma 0 0.2 sorry 0 0.1 we are just verifying that all this uh, if you are given that um, LGH uh, equal to LG LFH all the way to LG LF um, R minus 2 H is 0 then you get that uh, L yeah I'm just going to copy this I guess then you are you can basically claim that all the uh, L add F K's are also 0 okay yeah so you can claim that L add F K G H is 0 for K equal to uh, I guess 0 to R minus 2 okay because if because I am just specialized it to relative degree R okay. So the first thing we want to do obviously is to find compute these yeah let us start computing. Huh. So first things first, what is F? What is the drift vector field? What is the second term? I'm getting very nice. Huh? I think this is also a controller. Wow, wait a second. Uh, B x two plus u a k. Nee, that's some k. Yeah, it looks like it's just some constant. Okay, this is just k. Yeah good handwriting all right <laughs> all right fine now what is f let's start minus a x1 okay second component yeah the whole thing right third component excellent everything without the control and G is excellent yeah great okay what is H of X is X3 yeah of course one simple way to uh, do your uh, find relative degree is to start taking derivatives directly and find relative degree but unfortunately I have asked you to verify the lemmas yeah or ask myself I guess in this case to verify the lemmas. So, we will actually have to compute all this alright. So, if you see that the first term here is also LGH right because if I put K equal to 0 this is just LGH right. So, let us just compute LGH first. What is LGH? Postatic partial of H with respect to X what is it? Partial H with respect to X? Huh? 0, 0, 1 thank you and g is just 1 0 0 so obviously 0 done huh? first first done let us do lg lfh did I get this correct yeah I think I got this correct right what is lfh first 
LFH is again 0, 0, 1 multiplied by this mess minus AX1 minus BX2 plus K minus CX1 X3 theta X1 X2. Okay. What is this? Theta X1 X2. Thank you. All right. Now we do LG of LFH. Hmm? Or LG LF, I can put the bracket, that's fine. Yeah. It's a distributive operation. Now, if you want to do LG of LFH, what do I have to do? I have to take partial of this guy. Right. What is it with respect to X? Yes, go for it. Theta x2, theta x1, 0. Now, and I multiply with g. Now, did I get something? Thank God, I got something. Yeah, this is what? Theta x2, right? Okay, done. What was the relative degree? Uh, relative degree is what now? R minus, so this has to be 0 until R minus 2, right? So, it was 0 until k equal to uh, it was 0 until what? 1. That it is 2. How did I get 2? From this expression, how did I get to 2? I got that only LGH is 0. So, this term has to be LGH. So, R minus 2 equal to 0. So, R equal to 2. Great. Hmm? Just, okay. Just the last term has to be 0, right? All right. So, then I have to, of course, do this also. I have to prove that, I have to now compute um, L add F uh, 0 G H also, but this is actually equal to what? L G H, which is already proven to be 0. So, proving, so lemma 0 0.1 proved, yeah, too easy because I didn't have to compute any further derivatives at all. Done. Okay. Great. What was lemma 0 0.2? It was the linear independence. All right. Linear independence of dh, dlfh, and so on and so forth. Okay. In this case, how far do I have to go? Only till r minus 1. So, what is r minus 1 in our case? 1. So, I just have to go till LFH, LF1H, whatever, or LFH. Yeah. So, this is, that's it. So, I just have to compute this much. DH and DLFH. What is H? Sorry, what is DH? We've already done this. It's 0, 0, 1. What is DLFH? Did I get this right? Yeah. DLH is, DH is correct. LFH is this guy. What is the D of that? You already computed that also. Yeah, theta x2, theta x1, 0. Okay, this is linearly independent, right? I mean, uh, okay, let's be precise, right? If you remember, all we always talked about this linear independence for a particular point. We said at x0. In this case, uh, this is rank 2 for all x1, x2 not equal to 0, 0. Okay. x3 can be anything. Notice. x3 can be anything, it is irrelevant. But x1, x2 both cannot be 0. Okay. And of course, you can assume theta is not 0. Otherwise, stupid system. Yeah. All right. So, both x1, x2 cannot be simultaneously 0. x3 anything is allowed. Okay. Then this is rank 2. We are done. We have coordinates. Right. So, what are our coordinates now? y1 is hx itself which is x3, y2 is lfhx, right, that is what we chose, which is what, theta x1, x2, yeah, that is it I think, right, we only get two coordinates, right, because I mean, how many do we get? until r minus 1, right, we get until r minus 1, r minus 1 is just 1 in our case. So, we get h and lfh, these are the two coordinates we get. Now, what is the third coordinate? I do not know, 
I don't know what I can choose. I just want to make the whole thing a diffeomorphism. All right. So as of now, what did I get as the Jacobian? I got it as 0, 0, 1, theta x2, theta x1, 0. Yeah. Now, what should I choose as my third coordinate? Any guesses? Basically, I need it to be linearly independent from y1 and y2. That is in the Jacobian, it, sh it should contribute a third dimension. What do you think? I think something like uh, minus x1 and x2 0. This will work right? because that makes these orthogonal. This makes it orthogonal, right? I mean, just dot product of the huh? dot product of these is zero, right? That's I just use that idea. So if this is the uh, Jacobian, uh, then I'm good because this will be rank three. Because if you notice, if you take the determinant, this is always okay, no problem. Yeah, always going to give me one independent row or column. The Jaco uh, the determinant of this is what theta x one square plus x two square, right? So if if it's not at the origin. It's okay. Hmm. That's the best I can do. Huh? So, um, so I can take this. So, what will be the y three such that this is the Jacobian? Um, hmm. Partial with respect to x one is x one. Partial with respect to x two is x two. Uh, half x one square plus x half x two square. Yeah. All right. So I sort of back calculated this. Yeah. No point adding anything here. I mean, see, this is the trick. I'm just playing a trick here, right? I'm just adding a state so that I get this diffeomorphism. No, that's all my aim is. So the adding anything here is pointless because I already have, you know, full rank in this. No problem. No, no point adding anything here. Now how to make these two linearly independent? Make them orthogonal. The best way to make any two vectors linearly independent is make them orthogonal. This is the best way to do it. So I just do x1 square by 2 and x2 square by 2. Very Look at this, very crazy looking coordinates I got, right? Unusual. Started with very nice looking output, yeah? But then I ended up, it almost looks like my Lyapunov function, right? I got almost a Lyapunov candidate in the first two states, right? But whatever, this is a fair set of new coordinates, okay? Now what will happen? I mean, if I actually write the dynamics, yeah? Ha, uh, kya minus hai na? You guys always wait till the end to tell me which one is minus this one this one no ah thank you all right so not only upon a function excellent i like that all right <laughs> whatever right uh, yeah funny system i mean I, I i wonder that can it be simpler it could be but then what will happen is i could try something simpler what will happen that do is it will restrict the x1 x2 <laughs> in which this will work. Right now it will works for a very good class of x1, x2. Basically, whenever both of them are non-zero, it works, right? Which is what was the assumption here also. So this works whenever both of them are non-zero. Uh, sorry, any of them is non-zero, not both of them. Any of them is non-zero, this works, right? And that's pretty good, right? Because usually I always want to drive my systems to zero. So it works all the way till the end. Then it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I mean, you can see that I work almost till the end, right? Uh, if I choose something simpler, I think it will become restrictive. If I tried anything else, if I remove this, for example, if I remove this guy, hmm, if I made this 0, what would that do? Determinant will be theta x2 squared, right? So x2 will have to be non zero for this to work, right? So, yeah, I mean, you can think of other fun choices, but yeah. Let's try to compute the dynamics in this new variables. Let's see what I get. Hmm? Uh, y1 dot is what? X3 dot. X3 dot was what? Theta x1, x2. Oh, that was expected. No? Y1 dot was supposed to be y2. <laughs> Sorry, that is the whole point of this whole exercise. Yeah, y1 dot is y2. <laughs> yeah, what is y2 dot? y2 dot is the derivative of theta x1 x2. So that is theta x1 dot, which is ax1 plus u minus ax1 plus u times x2 plus 
theta x1 x2 dot which is what minus b x2 plus k plus c x1 x2 right something funny the only thing is i my control appears here hmm. only thing is the control appears here hmm. again it's very difficult to actually write this in terms of the y1 y2 and y3 so i'm not even going to try to attempt this uh, but the control appears here that's the good thing yeah and then if i do y3 dot i get half x1 square half x2 square so the derivative is uh, minus x1 x1 dot which is minus a x1 plus u uh, plus x2 x2 dot which is x2 minus b x3 plus k minus b x1 x3 okay so again if you see the control appears here also okay. so the control appears now in two equations okay could have been avoided again if i got rid of this guy and got rid of this guy control would not appear here then then you would have control only one equation may have made control design easier so this now then the choosing the third one really depends on a lot of factors of course you are trying to make it a diffeomorphism but there are infinitely many choices right then it is really on what's good for you okay so i think i i don't know did i try to yeah i did something interesting here if you see i chose this yeah if you see the previous page z1 was x3 i used the notation z1 z2 uh, z1 was x3 of course z2 is theta x1 x2 these we have no choice is what it is right z3 i took as x2 minus k over b okay uh, now why did i do that then because i got z1 dot is z2 z2 dot is whatever and z3 dot is this nice expression i have no idea why i chose this but if i take z3 as what i chose x2 minus k by b then what happens look at this what happens uh, if i choose z3 as x2 minus k over b right then this guy the third row becomes what mm, the derivative right it's just the partial of this so it will be 0 1 0 right? because this k by b is a some constant right this is also not a bad choice actually <laughs> you think about it right because it gave me a good extra column right and then this is what it is if one of them is any one of them is non zero i'm fine so actually this was a simpler choice right because this is just actually linear right any linear transformation is always nice right from a starting from one coordinate you move to another coordinate in a linear way this is also a nice choice because it gave me a nice full uh, you know these two are already linearly independent depends on nothing okay and then this one all you need is well actually in this case also no it is not that nice in this case also you must have x2 to be non zero i apologize it is not that nice by the way yeah sorry uh, you will need x2 to be non zero because if x2 is zero then this goes away you could have something here but then this becomes the same yeah 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 uh, so so this will also need x2 non zero yeah whereas this choice even though it is ugly looking uh, only x1 square plus x2 square non-zero is required okay all right so this is how you work with uh, feedback linearization eventually all those complicated looking expressions you only use some part of it in this case you only used r equal to 2 right so those expressions are significantly less in number but the computations are exactly like this you have to do this partials and multiply and so on and so forth okay all right any questions then you you will have full state feedback generation which is what we'll see next in that case it's the system is completely linearizable yeah physical meaning yeah, I mean it has physical meaning in the sense that it connects how your um, output and input are sort of, you know, again if you are looking in terms of uh, uh, 
whatever is your R, your system has a subsystem which is an R dimensional transfer function. Basically, your it has a larger system with additional state, but then in the middle there is sitting this R dimensional linear system. So it's almost like saying there is, yeah. I mean, then there's these notions of, I mean, anyway, I unfortunately will not have time to talk about those. But there's this notion of differential flatness also. If some of you have seen this, basically it says that yeah, you take a certain number of flat outputs and all the system states and the inputs can be represented as these flat outputs are their derivatives. Right. So again, this is also a similar notion, right? There you are, um, it's a property of the input output system. Yeah, it's somehow making some part of the system linear. So the behavior is will be linear. Yeah, whatever, all the robot dynamics cases, I mean, it's fully feedback linearizable, right? So it actually behaves like a double integral, it behaves like a linear system. Yeah, particularly easy to control, particularly easy to work with. Uh, other than that, no, I don't know of any other physical relevance. And controls folks attach physical relevance to uh, sensors and actuators, right? So if there is a linear connection between the sensor and actuator, we really love it, right? So we can do so much. Yeah, we can even, you know, most importantly, why? Because we can get performance, right? We can talk performance, transients. Non-linear systems, yeah, now there is so much literature on transients. But linear systems, it's so mature, right? How much overshoot, how much, you know, damping, you know, how will the oscillations look? These are also like critical values, critical. Hmm? Yeah. So that's the physical relevance for us. All right. Yeah. Fundamentally, there are robustness issues with feedback linearization. It's not Lyapunov based. As you can see, you are canceling things. You keep trying to cancel things. Yeah. Even this dynamics we saw in the end. Uh, if you see, you, you got this structure, right? it's rather complicated looking structure here. Now you got the control here and you got the control here. Notice uh, you, you had ux2 and minus ux1. Huh? You see this orthogonality sort of in the control. You remember in a Lyapunov function things, you would just take it as, you know, uh, if you take x1 square plus x2 square, it sort of cancels the two in some sense, okay. Uh, but you have ux2 theta and minus ux1. Of course, you can have a theta, it does not matter. Huh? Uh, you will see that we are not asking for x1 and x2 individually to be non-zero, but one of them to be non-zero at least. So, if one of them is non-zero, say x2 is non-zero, yeah, and this is zero, then you cannot do anything with this state anyway. But this state, you can make this whole thing linear by cancelling all the non-linearities. So, because it is a relative degree 2 system, you can only get a 2 dimensional linear system. Similarly, if x1 is non-zero, then this system can be made linear. This still remains whatever it is. Okay. So, you again get a 2 dimensional system which is linear. That is the whole idea. Alright. Okay. Any further questions? Alright. We will stop here.